Okay, we're now going to demonstrate an above knee plaster of Paris back slab. Um, there's two ways of doing this. It's, it's up to the individual. If you're doing a, a child, for instance, or someone who's got very small stature, then you can do this in one continuation back slab. So from under the thigh, all the way down under the foot. Do it in one piece with two stirrups, one either side. If you're unsure and the patient is um, quite heavy, which is, you know, most adults, it can be quite tricky to concentrate on a 90 degrees of the foot with no rotation. And you also need a 10 degree flexion of the knee to stop. We don't want full extension, otherwise it locks the knee out and it can cause cramp, etc., and be very uncomfortable. So that's all very difficult to concentrate on when you're doing it in one full piece. So it's more than happy for people to do this in two halves. So we're gonna cut out the below knee um, plaster first and have that ready to go. And that's exactly the same as what we did before with the below knee back slab. So we're just gonna start. What we will do first is put the stocking net on um, for the whole leg and this soft band as well. And then the actual plaster cast um, we will do in two halves. So we're going to use the large stocking net this time as we're going right up to the groin pretty much. Um, so again we measure from underneath, um, make sure you've got plenty under the heel um, and as you can see I've done this in much longer than you would think because it's easier again just to cut some away if you have too much. I'd rather that because it's very uncomfortable for the patient if you put one on and it's too short and you've then got to take it off. So, okay, we'll roll this up. You also need um, the person who's applying the plaster. They're in charge because they're cutting the plaster. They know exactly where they want to put it. So they are in charge of the plaster and they are the ones that are going to apply it. Once you've got it all ready and cut, you can then go and find two more people to help you with this application. Okay, so this um, sock has to go really close, I'm afraid, get nice and close to the groin. It's a little bit personal, but you need it as high as possible because otherwise when you fold it back, we want the cast to sort of finish here. We don't want the cast to finish just above the knee. So it's really close to the groin as much as you can. Okay, so the soft band. Um, of course, when someone's in pain, you you might need somebody to help you apply this, but you can cut all the plaster out ready first, and then when you've got your um, group of you in to do the plaster, you can then put this on then. But as my model here has no pain, we will do this just now. So two layers, as close again as you can. Um, I did forget to mention actually that when you're, before you put this sock on, do check the whole area of the leg, underneath the leg, making sure there's no exposed wounds, etc. because you never know. And if there's a wound, you need to have that covered and dressed before you put the cast on. Okay. Right. Just going to get another roll. And, um, on. Again, we just always take the little edges off so it conforms nicely and sticks to the one that you've already got there. Well done, thank you, that's great. And we work our way down the whole leg. Brilliant, and as you approach the ankle, keep it to 90 degrees so it doesn't all shrivel up around the ankle and cause any irritation. Ah, oh, we've just run out again, look, just before we finish. So, um, this might do it. We've got a little bit spare here. Okay, make sure it's all covered. Okay, and we still bring this really high up to the toes like we did in the below knee back slab. You can then check your positioning, make sure all the toes are exposed, just about. 
We're still going to take a little corner off like we did before, just to ensure that the little toe doesn't get hidden. Okay, so that's now the cascade of toes. Obviously my um, model here has a toe ring on. If there was an injury and fracture, we would ensure that that jewellery was removed. Okay, so that's going to sit really nicely. So we'll bring it back again and we're ready to cut out the plaster. Okay. So, I will just pop some gloves on. It's very gritty. So we're going to cut out the below knee first because when we actually apply the plaster, we're going to do the above knee first because generally for these type of injuries, it's either a proximal tibia injury um, or mid shaft. So then you'll need to extend and that's why we need to do the full leg. So if we actually immobilize the knee first, that generally gives the patient the comfort and then do the below afterwards. So we'd have to do it in reverse when we're preparing it. Okay, so we're gonna measure. We won't lift the patient's leg up because that's too uncomfortable. Just go the normal measurement to the below knee, behind the heel and up to the ball of the foot. Okay, there. So that's where for the below. Okay, so that can be our six layers for the main slab. Three. That's four. We're going to need lots more plaster out, I think. So that's the fourth one coming up. Four, five, six. Okay, and I've used the full biggest size plaster for this just to ensure we get good coverage. Right, we still do the same as before using our little applicator for our ruler. We're just going to make sure that that soft band covers that whole foot, good. So we're gonna pop the applicator there, placing your hand under the heel so that, and the end of it rests just nicely on the ball of her foot. So that's the exact measurement, which is good, that we do a slit for the ankle. And that helps you get and mold it around the ankle, okay? Then we're also going to just shape the toe area just because of the cascade of toes. This is now, I'm going to use this side as her big toe. Okay, so we only take a small amount and we take a much larger piece off for the little toe. And that will ensure we don't cover the little toe up. Right, so that's the slab done. We now need the stirrups. So we're just going to use the 10 centimetre plaster for the stirrups and we'll just measure those up so we need two lots of four so just tuck it round the heel and that's how long we need that okay that two four layers four and we need two lots of them okay one two just checking if we've got Three, and we're going to... Okay, so we're just continuing on doing our stirrups. So we've done one lot of four, and we're just in the middle of doing our next lot of four. I need one more layer there. Okay. So that gives us the two stirrups for the below knee. Right. So we can place them a little bit further over. Okay, and then this one on top, because that's the order they will go in. Right, now that's cut out ready, we now need to be cutting out for the above knee, okay? So we're going to use the 20 centimetres again, the widest plaster. And the thing to remember with the above knee is that the most important part, because of thinking about... Um, deep vein thrombosis etc we mustn't stop anything in mid calf so to protect that 
we need to do the above knee. When you measure it, you measure from the couple of centimetres lower than the soft band, and we measure past the calf muscle. So make sure we've completely gone past the muscle um, when we stop here, okay? So that's the calf muscle there. So I've stopped it just lower, just below that so that we don't stop it right in the middle of the calf. That will become dangerous. Right, so we can measure that out now for another six layers for the main slab for the above knee. Three, four, five. Ah, I'm just waiting for another one. Oh, my finger. Six. Right. It just feels like you're doing many pieces here, but it that's why the person who's cutting the plaster needs to be the one in charge when they're applying it. Okay, so that's the main slab. You don't need to cut it in any shape or form. It is just how it is here. All right? So we'll tw twist that a little bit so we can make sure we don't get confused with the other pieces. So for the stirrups for the above, we are still going to use the 20 centimetres because it's very deceiving how much that shrinks when you're putting it on the patient. So we've used 20 centimetres for the back, 20 centimetres for the stirrup. Doing exactly the same, okay? We're going past the calf muscle. So what you're going to find, this is exactly the same measurement as the main slab. But instead of doing six layers, like we did with the main slab, these are going to be four. Okay, so one. Two, three, four. It's a tiny bit short there, which I'm going to let that just, that doesn't matter. We can just fold it the other way to make sure that your top layer is a complete piece. And then you're not going to get, lose control when it goes in the water. Okay, so that's one. Now we need to do one more for the other side. Same again, four layers, two, three, four. Okay. Cut that one. All right, so that's that. We also need, not forgetting, I won't use the 20, I'll use the 15. Our little, we need two of them this time, one for the above, one for the below. Our little securing piece for the bandage. So we'd have one there and another one. Okay, so we've got two handy. Right, then we need a good couple of bandages. Use the four, the biggest ones. Um, definitely need two of those. So we'll unwrap them ready to go. Just gets a little bit um, busy on your trolley here. Okay, and we will put those nearer. Just going to get rid of some of this rubbish. Okay. One thing to know, because these stirrups are, when you lay one across here to see what I mean, that's one stirrup. And as you notice, this bottom edge starts to come right over the front of her shin. Okay, that's not good. So although we want the biggest size plaster to make sure it fits above the leg, what we're going to do is just cut a little piece off. We're going to take a little triangle off here. So we're going to go to the middle of the plaster at the bottom. So just choose the middle. And then we're going to choose the middle of this end. So about here. And we're just going to do one line like this. Okay, something like that. That'll be fine. So it just stops it from going across the middle of the leg. And we're going to do the same to that other stirrup. So pop that one back there, bring your other stirrup, and of course we'll do the same. So you just choose the middle of the plaster here, the middle of the length, and you cut a piece up to the middle. And what I always say, you end up with something that looks like a pair of trousers. <laughs> <laughs> it 
method in my madness. Doesn't that look good? They've got like skinny jeans on. <laughs> right. So make sure the main slab that you're going to use you put on top. So you've got your two stirrups there and the main slabs on top because that is the first piece you're going to put on. Right, we are now ready to start applying but we okay, need so to continue on with our above knee back slab. We've now got a team in to support us and support the patient to get this plaster on. So we're all ready to go. If you could now lift the leg and we're just going to get a very slight, as I said, 10% flexion of the knee and I will now wet the above knee section. So removing the bubbles, slight squeeze at the top, one at the bottom, extend the piece of plaster out. Okay, and then I'm gonna hold it like so, so I can measure, and then I'll swap with my colleague Rosie, yeah, if you can hold that there, and then one under the knee for me. Brilliant, and then this extends way down past the calf muscle, so that makes sure we've completed past the muscle, so we're not in any danger of any risks of DVT, etc. Right, and we're trying not to use our fingers in the plaster, so we don't get any dents. Now we're going to put one of the stirrups on, which as I said looks like one of our um, pair of trousers. So the widest part at the top, that's going to extend, that's great, over, fabulous. This then extends down to here, and so then we're not getting it over the shin bone. Okay, fantastic, all right. The next one we are going to do the other side. Slight squeeze of the plaster, fully extend it out, and I might just rely on my colleagues here to help place that. Okay, does it um, making sure it overlaps the cast that's already underneath? So it must. Can you feel that, Rosie? Is that yeah. brilliant? Because we don't want an area without any plaster. Now we've done that, we can bring all the sock back. You can fold it back. Okay. Holding that back under the leg. Yeah. Right. Okay, so if, Dan, if you can just put under the calf, mm -hmm. slight flexion of this knee again, please. And then we are going to bandage that so it helps hold our position with the top of the leg. All right, so we're going to go twice round, really firm bandage for the top of the leg, otherwise it will get too loose. Okay, really full extension of the bandage. Supporting the knee. Okay. It's very heavy for everybody. Okay. Now we've done that, I'm just gonna stop here, take, cut this piece, and we can put our first securing piece on just to stop the bandage from rolling. Okay, that can come on here. Brilliant, just roughly to hold that in place, stop it unraveling. Right, so we get that nice little flexion of the knee and if we can get the towels, we just brought two towels in and we're going to sort of put it up a bit. That's it, I've lost my scissors under there somewhere, there they are. Okay, and we can just slightly bend that knee. That's good. Just let that start to set a moment so that keeps that nice. And we need that flexion of the knee to stop the leg cramping. Okay, so we've now finished applying the above knee and we've got a nice 10% flexion of the knee. And now we can concentrate on the below knee, ensuring we have a nice 90 degrees of the foot with no rotation. Okay, so I'm just going to wet the plaster and then I'll get um, you two to lift the leg again for me. Okay, slight squeeze at the top of the plaster, one at the bottom, so you're not dripping water everywhere. Pull it out so it's fully extended and then apply the foot area first. So we're going to pop that on, tucking it round the heel 
like so. And then we can lift the rest of it up, resting against my body. Um, and we've got also nice good support going on here. Right, okay, just untuck that because it's just got caught. Okay, and then I can just put a little bit of pressure on the base of fifth to mould the heel in place. And again, if you can now, Dan, just take the, putting pressure on the base of fifth and not anywhere near the big toe, mm -hmm. okay? Otherwise it will rotate. Okay, now there's two stirrups we'll put into place. Squeeze that, as we did with the below knee, line it up just to cover the ankle. Okay, fantastic. One for the other side. we can then start putting the bandage on. Right, one that side. You can just make sure I've covered everything, yeah. Make sure I've covered the lower plaster as well. Okay. Over that's brilliant. We can then turn this back, exposing the toes. Okay, that's nice. We've also got that nice again, 90 degrees the foot. Are you all right just keeping yeah. that pressure there, Dan, for me? Yep. And then we'll just finish off with the next bandage. You don't have to actually put wet these bandages to put them on with crepe. It's entirely up to you. You could wet them if you so wish, but it doesn't need to be. Okay, Let me just make sure we haven't got any, hopefully haven't got any fingerprints or anything in the plaster. <laughs> okay, hold that down. Okay. And then round the heel. Just go where the bandage wants you to. We've missed a little area there, but we'll catch that on the way back down. Round the heel like that. Start to work our way back up. Good. Because actually when you use the largest bandage, that's when it all starts to pucker a little bit. Right, and we can then pop the other securing piece at the bottom there. Okay, just checking that we've got that covered because we're using the um, biggest bandage. If we need to put another bit on, we can always look. I've got a little frayed bit there. So you can just top that up with another piece. Any scraps that you've had from earlier will be fine. That can just go on, wet it, just to cover that area. Okay, just because that looked and I will just cut that bit off. And just pieces that we had. Good. And that will hold it in place. All right. Okay, and we can rest down on the towels. And then we should have just a very slight bit of flexion on that knee. You only need minimal, but just to stop that crampy feeling and we've got a nice position of the foot. Okay, thank you, that's the above knee.